Hey guys, welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. I'm your host Jesse Morgan, and uh, today I'm going to be doing that uh, metal tag that uh, was originally done by, um, well, not the metal tag, but the original tag for this was actually done by a YouTuber by the name Wright Cinemas. Uh, that uh, was normally, or was originally about like movies and horror movies and stuff like that. Uh, but then was revamped for metal and rock and roll by the bunny or the bunny barn by Jax, and she turned it into like a metal tag. Uh, so I'm gonna link the original video by Wright Cinemas, and I'm gonna link the bunny barn by Jax's uh, revamp tag in the description below. And uh, yeah, she renamed it My Life in Heavy Metal and Rock and Roll, and this was the one I was tagged in. And uh, each part of the questions have like a, a, a title tag to it. So the first one uh, is called First Steps. And with First Steps, the question is, first song or bands you remember hearing as a child? Uh, now, I'm going to say legit bands and stuff like that uh, were probably like Alice Cooper or Ozzy or Black Sabbath or ACDC or Deep Purple stuff like that uh, and I think that was back when I was maybe six or seven uh, I heard stuff like Megadeth as well uh, the people I've heard this th these bands from were my my mother my father uh, my mother's boyfriend at the time aka my sister's father and I guess my sister's oh, what would that be to her her cousin? I don't know. It would be her father's nephew. So yeah, I guess her cousin Fred, and he listened to stuff like Metallica and Megadeth and stuff, and when I used to visit him, that's what he'd have on. So yeah, uh, as a young kid, that's basically what I heard besides just really silly like kid songs like Fred Penner and uh, Stuff like that that I can't even remember the name of. Um, so yeah, that was basically the first kind of metal and rock and roll stuff I heard as a kid that I can remember. I try not to remember that part of my childhood because it was not the greatest. Um, so yeah, that was number one called First Step. Uh, number two is Teenage Crush. And the question for that is, which singer slash band member did you have a crush on or still have a crush on? And, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at this, but, uh, when I was really young, one of my first crushes was the drummer from Hanson. Uh, now if you don't know and you're new to the channel, I'm quite aware that uh, the drummer from Hanson was a dude. Um, the funny thing is, a lot of young guys at the time kind of had a crush on one of the the Hanson members, but the confusing thing was they all thought that, that they were like a chick band. Uh, as I'm pansexual, I didn't really care whether they were male or female, so the, the drummer from Hanson I had a slight childhood crush on, I guess. Um, now, the ones that make more sense to you guys would probably be uh, the following. Um, Sky Sweetnam, Avril Lavigne, um, one of the girls from Live On Release that I can't remember the name of, and probably Morgan from Kitty. Uh, just probably really obvious crushes, just kind of big names in like the pop scene and, and whatever. But then like the actual somewhat metal, like pop metal, like Live On Release, I don't know if you'd consider that pop metal. Probably not. Uh, but then you got the new metal vocalist from Kitty, so I guess that would count as a metal crush. Uh, not anymore, you know, you know, Sky Sweet Nam and Avril Lavigne and all them, they're, they're attractive women, I guess, but I don't have crushes on artists anymore, so, but that was, those were a few, uh, but yeah. Alright, the next one is Bad Choices and Good Outcomes, uh, and that is a singer, band, or song you ended up enjoying even though you didn't want to. Now... I wasn't a big fan of rap back in the day. Uh, I think I listened to stuff like 
Eminem or Insane Clown Posse or, you know, NWA. Um, but it was like very rarely uh, that I would listen to stuff like NWA type of rap. Mostly it was just Eminem and Insane Clown Posse if I did listen to rap at all. And yeah, 50 Cent came along and I just thought it was ridiculous. I didn't like the whole gangster rap thing. It just, I didn't like his attitude. I thought that uh, in the club song was really, really annoying. Hey, shorty, it's your birthday. Like, I didn't really like it. Um, but as years went on, I actually started picking up on other songs that 50 Cent did. And I got more into that. And I just, I never would have saw myself getting into music like that. So that's one. Um, but in metal, I guess, would be symphonic black metal. Because... I, you know, I didn't really like the style. I didn't really like keyboards and stuff like that in black metal. Because the bands that I heard, they made, like, the keyboards and the synths, like, the forefront of the music where everything was, like, behind, everything else was behind, so. Uh, but ever since I've kind of got into bands like Hyperion, Diablery, Shadowcraft, uh, Emaciation, and... You know, other bands like that, I've kind of been changing my mind about symphonic black metal, and it can be enjoyable, as long as the synths and keyboards aren't, like, right here. As long as they're, like, back here with the rest of the instruments, then it's fine. Alright, number four is called First Date, and it, the question is, band or song that was playing on your first date? Now, if, I don't know if the rules are it has to be, like, your first date ever with your first uh, partner, or it could just be any first date. Um, I can't remember if I had anything playing while I was actually with my first partner. Uh, and my first girlfriend ever was a girl named Tara Brannigan back in like grade 7 or grade 8. So when I was 13 or 14 or something like that. Um, and I can't quite remember the music I listened to back then. It was probably something like Corn, or fucking, I don't even know. What the hell did I listen to in grade 7? Something probably extraordinarily embarrassing. Um, so I'm going to say just probably new metal. So like Disturbed or System of a Down. Uh, I know in high school, and I met another ex named Rhonda Prock now, I was really, really big into Insane Clown Posse. And I remember them into the night we first kind of kissed and made it official. Uh, on the way home, I was listening to the Shangri-La album and was listening to those songs, so I think, I guess that would count, but yeah, I don't know. Anywho, uh, the next song, uh, question here, number five, is First Heartbreak. Uh, what band really upset you and now are no longer a fan of? Uh, well, no band has really upset me. I don't think any band that I've liked has done anything ridiculous enough for, to warrant me not liking them anymore because of said reason that I can think of, but bands that I used to be pretty into that I don't listen to anymore uh, just because I grew out of it or, or whatever the hell uh, were Megadeth. I used to have Megadeth's like, entire collection. I sold it. Don't really listen to them anymore. Uh, Dave Mustaine's vocals does nothing for me anymore. Um, Cradle of Filth. I just, I don't Pretty much the same thing. Danny's voice doesn't do anything for me anymore. Uh, the keyboards are way too prominent in uh, their style of gothic metal with black metal tendencies now. I don't even consider them like full-on black metal anymore. But that's just my opinion. Uh, and Pantera. I used to be actually pretty big into Pantera back in high school. Like fucking Hostile, Cowboys from Hell, uh, Walk, all like the stereotypical like cliche songs by them. Uh, Reinventing the Steel is pretty good. I wasn't a big fan of the Far Beyond Driven album. I think there might have been one or two songs that I enjoyed from that. Uh, but yeah, I, I grew out of that pretty quickly after high school and I sold all those albums. And yeah, no, they didn't do anything that warranted me to hate them or just like them for any negative reason concerning their career or any of the members. It just, it didn't, it just, isn't something that I enjoyed anymore. My t my tastes changed. So, yeah. 
All right, number six is home comforts, and that is bands that remind you of being with your family. I don't, I'm not, the last time I've been with my whole family has probably been years ago, especially on my dad's side. My mom's side, I think we had like a right family get together, uh, which is their last names, right? Um, maybe two years ago? I don't think I went to the last one, but uh, yeah, they, and they normally get together on Christmas. So I guess Christmas songs or Christmas related songs would I guess remind me of that. But uh, if you're just talk if I'm just talking about like my family as in just my mom or just my dad, uh, songs that were, would remind me of them would be like Steppenwolf or songs bands would be Steppenwolf, Grasshopper, Tom Petty, Foreigner, Ario Speedwagon, kind of like these old rock and roll bands that just they probably listen to as they're like 20 year olds or 30 year olds and just kind of stuck with them so that would kind of remind me of my mom or my dad because that's what they used to listen to besides like Ozzy and Megadeth or Megadeth yeah right Ozzy and Sabbath and Alice Cooper and stuff like that uh but those those bands would really make me think of them now the next uh question is leaving home and it's what song or band did you listen to when you were first on your own or you know living on your own for the first time um yeah i was i think i was kicked out of my house <laughs> like when i was 18 or 17 or 18 years old uh, i i lived in my car for uh, about four four months uh, I went to my cousin's place to have a shower, went to a friend's place to have a shower and have some food every now and then. Uh, but after that four months, my girlfriend at the time, uh, her mother said, no, just come move in with us. We're not having you like being homeless. So I guess that was kind of out on my own for the first time. And while I was there, I was still into new metal, still into insane clown posse. Uh, big into Tool, uh, so that's probably what I listened to the most when I first got out on my own, whether I wanted to or not. Alright, next few more questions. This is going to be probably a long video. Uh, so, number eight is Good Times. What band do you listen to the most and why? Uh, I don't really listen to one specific band a lot right now. Uh, any music I get, I throw it on my Xbox 360 and I put it into a mix of whether that's black metal or punk or slam whatever it is I just kind of put it in a big giant mix uh, of like you know 600 to 2,000 songs depending on what list it is and I just normally give that a big listen to but if I was to throw on one specific band from each genre uh, I'd probably throw on Ashpool or I'd probably throw on like Ashdoutess or some kind of uh, Black Twilight Circle band. Um, I'd probably throw on Dodd's Ritual or um, Catavolcus with Dragovia, uh, something like that. Um, I've been throwing on Funeral Chic a lot lately. Uh, their their V I T O A. EP or self-titled EP was really good. Um, the album was also really good, Hate, Hatred Swarm. Um, so yeah, just those, or just punk lately, like The Defectives or The Casualties or something like that. Um, and they just, I don't know, I, I don't know why, it's just they, I really enjoy those bands specifically a lot lately, so I can't really answer the why part, it's just what pleases my ears. But yeah, mostly just mixed playlists, nothing super specific. Uh, next one is learn a new language, and that's number nine. And it's what is your favorite non-native language band? So if you spoke German, what would be like an English band that you would listen to, or a French band? If you spoke Norwegian, what would be you know? But I speak English, so a non-English band. Um, the first non-English band was Ramstein, so I, I'm pretty sure everyone's first band that they, you know, that isn't English they listen to is Ramstein, if you're from North America, Canada, or England. Um, but, yeah, after that, I discovered a really fucking cool band 
called Maximum the Hormone. And they uh, really got me into stuff that wasn't English. These albums specifically, Fuika Aisu and Rokunpo Goroshi. That's disgusting. Um, but yeah, those two bands, they really uh, did it for me. And they're like J-pop, I guess. But it's it's like, it's weird stuff. It's like System of Down meets Simple Plan sometimes meets like crazy death metal riffs or breakdowns I definitely recommend if you're uh, looking to expand your horizons musically to check out Maximum the Hormone really good stuff um, but yeah that was one of the very first bands besides Ramstein that I got into that wasn't English um, some other bands that are really good probably like Nord Reed they're a really really good black metal band uh, that's obviously not English um, Blunt Force Trauma is a good kind of like slam and brutal death metal band that's not English um, check out their check out their album called Vengeance for Nothing see if I can find it here for you guys this is really really good stuff and it's definitely not English right there Called Blunt Force Trauma, Vengeance for Nothing. Really good slam slash brutal death metal stuff. I'm pretty lucky to actually have a copy of this, to be honest, because it's rare and hard to find. Even trying to find it on YouTube's a bitch. Like you're gonna, you'd have to look up specific songs. Like look up Blunt Force Trauma, Blackboard Jungle, or or look up uh, Live for Nothing, Live for Nothing, Die for Something. You know stuff like that, but. Yeah. So that's that for the kind of non-English bands for me. Uh, Sick Days is the next question. That's number 10. And it says, what songs or bands do you listen to when you're not feeling well to cheer you up? Uh, if I'm in a bad mood, I'm probably not going to want to listen to music. I'm probably just going to, like, I don't know, shut myself off or go for a walk or, I don't know, stew... And try to like get whatever's off of my mind off my mind. I might throw on some music, um, but if I'm like feeling ill or just under the weather, and I want to cheer up, I'd probably throw on something like uh, "Now Diabolical" by Sir Tiracon because that's my favorite album by them. Uh, I might throw on "Death Crush" by Mayhem because that's really really cool, unique stuff uh, for black metal. Um, my favorite Mayhem album, or if I wanted like get in a better mood if I'm not too like upset about something I'll throw on something like Ale Storm because it's like upbeat and kind of silly and just it, like really cool folk metal kind of stuff uh, things about pirates in the high seas and ale and wenches like how does that not put a smile on your face so that would probably be what I'd listen to question 11 is look into the future it says what bands are you looking forward uh, to new material from or seeing live uh, live, I'd probably just say any big name black metal slam or punk band because there's nothing here in Ontario. We get some local bands that are deathcore, metalcore, maybe some death metal, maybe the odd random punk or black metal band, but it's nothing amazing usually. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I would actually like to see Enstil, uh, Takei, Gorgoroth, Immortal, like for black metal stuff. Uh, for punk, maybe Diffuse, The Scam. Uh, the Defectives would be neat. The Chernobyl Babies would be neat. Um, for Did I say for Slam? I meant Punk. Uh, but for Slam, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing Disfigurement of Flesh, uh, or Acranius, or Parasitic Ejaculation, or even my dudes in uh, Flesh of the Lotus. That'd be cool if they did a Canadian show, and I got to see them live. I'm definitely looking forward to new material from them. Um... Yeah, uh, would love to see those bands live, um, and any new material from, you know, the Defectives or Chernobyl Babies would be cool. I think they may have broken up, unfortunately, I don't know. Um, yeah, any any new stuff from Acranius would be sweet, any new stuff from Flesh of the Lotus, any new stuff from, like, Takei or Gorgoroth or Immortal, 
Uh, even if Abbott isn't in it, I'm still interested in seeing what happens with them. All right, so I got five minutes left. Let's see if I can nail these last three uh, questions here. Can't take your, off your headphones is the question number twelve, and it's what song or band has you hooked right now? Uh, Turner Oval Babies has a song called Class of 04. It's really good. Uh, the Defectives has a song called We Are Defectives, which is really good. But other than punk, uh, like Ashpool, Human Bodies, the uh, Sons of Omega was really cool. It came in one of the last Metalhead box. They're really good. Uh, if I throw on a song by them, I have to listen to the entire, you know, album. So, yeah, th those would have me hooked, and I definitely can't stop listening to them. Same with the Casualties. Amazing stuff. All right, number 13 is If Only. Uh, what bands would you like to see reunite? Um, now, mostly like a lot of local stuff. Uh, Pagan Ritual was one of the, probably the best black metal bands that were uh, like indie and near you know where I live. They played a lot of Oshawa shows. They played a lot at the Atria, uh, which is you know a pub around here. Um, they played a lot at the Diesel Room, which is the pub upstairs from the Atria. So yeah, I, I would be sick if uh, Pagan Ritual ever got back together. I'd love to see them live again now that I'm more into black metal. Um, Black Jacket would be cool to see uh, get back together. Uh, Doug Distortion and the rest of the gang uh, would be sweet to see them like re-release some of their albums that I don't have because all I have is systems to shut down and I'd like to get the other two albums they released after that, but I don't know where I could track them down. <coughs> so that'd be neat. Uh, no alternative, same, kind of just like pop punk kind of group that was around uh, Bowmanville and Oshawa for a while, but they're no longer together. Their last album they released was uh, 13 Shots. And uh, you can actually find Black Jacket and No Alternative albums on my channel, like a few, like quite a few videos back. You just kind of have to look for them. Uh, there's a local band called This Is Death Valley that would be cool to get back together. Uh, they're kind of huge in like the metal Durham region scene here in southern Ontario for a while. They broke up last year, I believe. Uh, they're kind of all pursuing different ven like ventures and stuff like that now, but it would be neat if they just reunited for a bit, maybe release a new album. Uh, Hennessist Host, or Host, would be cool. Uh, he released, it was a solo artist in the States who released one album back in the day. And, uh, yeah, it would be fucking awesome if he, you know, stopped doing rap and went back and did some black metal stuff, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. On Craig from Montreal or Quebec, uh, I think they released three albums and then stopped. I uh, haven't heard anything else from them. Uh, the Black or Dissection uh, would be cool if they reunited and did another album. Uh, I don't know how they do it without John, but or the guy that killed himself, if that's his name. I'm pretty sure it's John. But uh, it would still be cool to see if they could, you know, reunite and do some more stuff. And another one that no one, none of you guys is gonna know. There's a band called Dry Cell, and they're kind of like a mix between, like. Uh, Lincoln Park and fuck, I don't know. They they were on. Uh, they had a track on the Queen of the Dam soundtrack. Really, really cool. Uh, they released one album that didn't get much like press or uh, copies made, and it was an album called Disconnected. But yeah, it was really good. And the last so uh, question here uh, that actually wasn't included on Bunny Barnes' uh, video, uh, but I included in mine. Well, it's called End of the Road, and that's number 14, and it's, uh, what three bands do you think you will always enjoy listening to? And it'll probably just be The Roots, uh, where I started, so like Black Sabbath or Alice Cooper, or, uh, maybe when I got to high school with stuff like Marilyn Manson or Rob Zombie, I, I think I'll always enjoy listening to stuff like that, and I have to say Six Feet Under, because without Six Feet Under, I would have never gotten as far into death metal as I did, or as quickly. And for black metal, it'll probably be Satyricon, because they have some of the coolest riffs. Um, they have a, quite the interesting discography of different styles they put out, and I cannot wait to get the new album by Satyricon. So, yeah. Anywho, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'm probably not going to tag anyone. If Motley Crue Forever 1 wants to do it, if Julian wants to do it, uh, if Sedition Through Scorns wants to do it, or Air Noctis, you can do this tag. Uh, if not, you don't have to. It's cool. Anyways, that's it.
For glory, the rebellion, slammer allowed.